God, you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the praise. So we offer praise. We don't always feel like it, but on today, God, we offer everything that we have before you. We lay it at your feet and we give you glory. We give you honor because you are good. You never change. Hallelujah. We offer you our best praise. All the way from Memphis, Tennessee, my hometown. I ain't bragging or boasting, but my hometown. A great man of God. Would you please welcome Pastor Andrew Papina from Holy Nation Church of God in Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. Hallelujah. Come on, don't lose that worship. Look up and say, for your goodness, Lord. towards us for your goodness and your mercy don't leave out the goodness and the mercy hallelujah all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. Verse 11, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein. Verse 13, and when thy herd and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied. Let's jump down to verse 17 for time. And thou said in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me let me say this wealth, this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Hmm. So, 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 history is powerful. And the study of it is important. Do you know where you came from? Fed County, do you know where you came from? Hey, Amen. We thank God. Do you remember that? Do you know your story? Do you know why you act the way you act? Mm -hmm. History is important. George Santania at the age of 48, left his position at Harvard and returned to Europe. He is the one that coined the aphorism, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Satan is hoping that we do not study our past. He is hoping that you will find uh, uh, not find out how much God loves you. Then want you to read the word. Find out the sacrifice that has been made. There are over 3,000 promises in the Bible. There are 368 promises of God in the Bible. One for each day of the year. 
In times of prosperity, we as believers in Jesus Christ need to, let me say, remember. We need to remember that God and God alone is your source. He's the source. I, I know you, I know you, I know you, mama been good to you. I know grandfather's been good to you. I know siblings been good to you, but it's only God. That's your source. Mm -hmm. We receive gifts because of God's grace and his goodness, not because of our education, not because of our intellect or even our hard work. Uh -huh. Education and hard work help develop the gifts God gives. The blessings of life merely appear to confirm, listen, the covenant relationship God has established and kept for us. I submit to you, my brothers and my sisters, God supplies us with, let me say, everything. Uh, can you, can you, do you understand? God supplies us with everything that we need and like any contract there are terms in which we must understand and follow which comes with promises let's pray most gracious heavenly father god we thank you for this day we thank you for our lives we thank you for health and strength god i ask you to decrease me and increase thee in me that i might Preach your word, hallelujah. Herald your unadulterated gospel with power and clarity. Say then your contracts are canceled. You have no authority here. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to speak for the rest of the time that I have from a topic, total recall. Hear me say, Lord, give me total recall. Amen. God made a covenant, a contract, a promise with Abraham in Genesis 12 and 1 that, that he would bless his descendants and make them his own special people. In return, Abraham and family were to remain faithful to God and serve a channel through which God's blessings could flow to the rest of the world. Somebody is depending on you to be faithful. You may not know their names right now, but somebody is depending on you. I don't care. I know it gets hard sometimes. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Sometimes people get on your... Look at somebody and say, it gets hard sometimes. It gets hard sometimes, but somebody is depending on you to remain faithful. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8 and 1, it says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live, multiply, and possess land that God swore to your fathers. It's no time to say a land. It's time to possess the land. Amen? Amen. It seems like it might seem easy, easy, you know, how much you want for that. But it's time to hold on. And matter of fact, it's time to possess the things that God has given. Verse 2 says, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God lead thee, led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. We've come a long way. We've come a long way. You've come a long way. I, I promise you there has been some time that you didn't think you were going to make it. When you gave up, God was just getting going. Yeah. Amen. Has anybody ever gave, given up? Oh, just put your head. I, I, I'm a, I, I, just when you say, I can't take it no more. When you looked up, have y'all ever driven in the middle of the night? And you got home and you can't remember stopping at the red light? 
You can't remember taking that. I've come back and forth from Nashville to Memphis, and I said, I asked my wife, when, are we going, when did we go over the Tennessee River? I couldn't remember. But I was on her before you know it, God will have you on the other side. Uh, hear me say, remember all the way. Mm -hmm. He's leading us. He's led them through the wilderness 40 years to humble thee. Let you know it's not by your might, not by your power, but it's by the Spirit uh, of God. Here in the text, Moses is reminding God's people of how important it is to, let me say, never, never forget what God has done to get them to a place of promise, the place called the promised land. We need to remember uh, that word in Hebrew, zakak, or re when, you, when you say remember, the Hebrew word means to recall or to call out. It's all right. It's all right. It, it, it call out the protections. Remember the deliverances and remember the provisions God has done to get you and I to the place that we are right now. We've been at the point of break. We've been at the point of giving up. But because we can recall, hallelujah, God wants you to remember so you can, can go further. But he also wants you to remember so you can encourage somebody else. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because see, see, see when, when you've been at that point before, you can see that on other people. You don't have to get in their business. Just encourage them. Let me say total recall. God's promises, one, requires a proclamation. Proclamation, a public decree or an announcement. We come uh, to Sunday service and we come to Tuesday and Wednesday services in order to remember. Mama, why you come to church? Big Daddy, why you come to church all the time? To remember. What are you remembering? I remember. Hallelujah. Well, it's some stuff. Sometimes we, we try to shelter people from things that you've been through, but they need to know. Let me say hell. Yeah, you've been there. You've been through there. You find out hell is not a curse word. Hell is a place that I'd rather not visit any more and certainly not want to spend eternity there. Uh-huh. So we pray to remember. We praise to remember. And we as believers are to make bold proclamations of what the Lord has done in our Lives, you don't look like what you've been through. Anybody here that does not look, if you told people what you've been through, they would say, now nah, they done went to line. If you told somebody what you actually been through, ain't a movie, it's not a book, it's not a novel, but my life. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, I do remember that. Ephesians 2 and 11 says, wherefore remember, that Greek word remember, mana yomino, or the root word, exercise your mind. Uh, remember, when you're remembering, you're exercising your mind. Remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the uncircumcision in the flesh made by hands. Paul was saying you need to confess publicly that the Jews once called you heathens. Amen. Amen. But have, have, 
Do you remember when somebody actually thought you were a heathen? Until you came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh huh. When we were in the dark, when we were in sin, when we didn't know there was a light, they called you heathen. But because of Jesus Christ, you do now. So my brothers and my sisters, Paul tells us to exercise our minds of the how good God has been to us. Don't forget your history. Just because you can wear a Louis Vuitton, eh, red bottle, or you think uh, 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 no one knows what you used to do. All you got to do is stay at folk for a minute. They'll start confessing all they know. I move on. And now you are in the promised land. Let me say, I cannot forget how good God has been to me. Uh -huh. In the text, verse 11, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest thou, when thou hast eaten thy art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy Flocks multiply and the silver, oh, let the money flow, and the gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. First thing God promises requires that proclamation. Second thing, God's promises renders, here it comes already, prosperity. Mm -hmm. Moses tells the people to be mindful about having plenty. Because being prosperous doesn't guarantee that you won't have suffering. Mm. Don't start tripping when you're able to pay your bills on time. Because prosperity can even become a temptation. You will begin to trust yourself instead of the Lord. Malachi 3 and 10 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out. Uh, heaven says, he's talking about me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where you are, but if you can remember, God is saying, Try me. Remember me. And see, won't I, I did it then, but check it out and see, won't I do it for you right now? Pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room to receive. In other words, in other words, when, when, you, when you get it, you need to learn how to share it. Be a blessing. God doesn't need money. His challenges when it comes to what you have is him protecting us from us and setting us up to receive more from him. My brothers and sisters, you must remember that God always keeps his promises and we should keep ours. Let me say total recall. In verse 17, and thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this well. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, but he may establish his covenant, the power that you have to, to get your corporation started, the power that you have gleaned. 
receiving the word of God is that you may become mature, that you may help establish the covenant of God. So God promises requires a proclamation. God promises renders prosperity. Thirdly, God's promises releases power. Mm, hear me say power, Lord. We say, you know, we need more power. Power, Lord. Send power. Power, Lord. You, know, you need to figure out what the stuff means before you start calling and responding. Heaven say, pow! pow! Yeah, that was all right. But be careful because a lot of times pride accompanies power. Yeah, 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 pride accompanies power. Pride causes a person to take credit for human achievements. Pride will help you forget that the skills and abilities that you use for your achievements are merely gifts from God. Psalm 62 and 10 says, Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to God. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. You reward everyone according to what they have done. When you confess publicly, let me say remember. When you confess publicly, when the praises are going up, you're like, well, you know, I just, you know, I, I really can't. Sing. The Lord didn't say sing. He said make a joyful noise. Make, heaven say make some noise. Make some noise. That's what the tambourines are for. Give them a tambourine. Make some noise because when you remember and think of the goodness of Jesus and I, he's done for you. Your soul should cry out. Mm, don't let your body get in the way of your praise because it's your soulish man the spirit of God that should be crying out hallelujah uh, when you confess publicly you love your love for God pride subsides the more money you make the more praise you should make. You get up and start running around. Say, what you doing? I'm trying to keep myself in check. God is blessing me, so I got to keep myself in check. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, 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 when you confess publicly that you were in sin, and now you are saved by the grace of God. Humility increases. Mm -hmm. Let me say total recall. I'm almost finished. In this portion of the text, Moses concludes in verse 19. And it shall be, if thou do it all, forget. The Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them. Oh, my God, you've forgotten, you've forgotten, you've forgotten, you've forgotten where the Lord has brought you. Now you're trying to, they told me, don't change horses in the middle of a race. Amen? If he's gotten you through the, the five-digit income. If he's gotten you through the six-digit income, he still can get you 
to where you are going. Help me say total recall. God's promises request a proclamation. God's promises renders prosperity. God's promises releases power. And the last one, God's promises remains prisoners of sin. Hmm. What do you mean? Psalm 145 and 20 says it like this. The Lord preserves all who loves him. But all the wicked he will destroy. Mm -hmm. Moses warns a chosen generation. He warns Abraham's family of promise. God's children to have total recall of what God has done for you. Mm -hmm. He says you can't become absent-minded regarding your history. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to forget who kept you from losing your mind. Ah, yeah. uh, Lord, who kept you out of jail? Mm -hmm. Who blessed you when you weren't even Bless worthy. Uh, in, in, in 2 Samuel 7 and 13, it says, He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish uh -huh, the throne of his kingdom forever. Let me say forever. The best part, he says, I will be. His father, and he shall be my son. Ah, don't get jealous when daddy is blessing the other siblings. You in the family? You supposed to applaud when your daddy is doing what he's supposed to do. Don't get jealous when the Lord is healing the broken heart. You're supposed to applaud him. I found out, I found out, and this is for free. When, when the enemy starts attacking you, it is not personal. But he's attacking you because of what you have in you to free somebody else. Ah, so God's promises. Oh, I have another one. Request a proclamation. God's promises renders prosperity. God's promises releases power. God's promises remains prisoners of sin. And I think this one is the last one for real. God's promises requires a new prophet. Well, in this passage, Nathan the prophet is prophesying to the King David about his son Solomon. Saying how God would use him. And even though he would make mistakes, you're going to make some mistakes. But God is going to still give you the power. He is still going to bless your house. Said God will never release his covering from Solomon. Now, never. You know, they told me, don't just say never because you don't know what you're going to have to come into. But when God says never, God means never. And my brothers and my sisters, he is also telling us about God's promises of a new prophet. Help me say a new prophet. It, you might be in the seat to become a new prophet. 
Your family may be watching you because they need a word from the Lord. And you might be the new prophet. Jesus, 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 who came through the lineage of David. Because of sin, God needed a sacrifice so the covenant would remain valid. Not the blood of turtle doves or goats, but the promises of his contract to flow continuously. There had to be, everybody say a holy, there had to be a holy sacrifice, not a temporal sacrifice, not a temporary sacrifice, but that holy sacrifice. That ultimate sacrifice that would hold until you got here. That would hold until you got here. That could hold until I got here. I can't forget the one who supplies all of my needs. I must recall the Savior. I can't forget it. If it had not been for Jesus, I would have run out of love. I can't forget it. If it had not been for Jesus, I would have run out of joy. I can't forget it. If it had not been for Jesus, I would have been out of business a long time ago. Jesus, Jesus is the one in which those 3,000 promises swing on. Jesus, Jesus, I can't forget him because my history, oh, my memory is important. I have total recall that because of the blood, because of the blood of Jesus, I can be healed now. Because of the blood of Jesus, prosperity is mine. I have total recall that because of the blood, power is mine. Salvation! 